Welcome to Touchpoints TV. I'm Debbie House, Editor-in-Chief of Retail Touchpoints, and I'm here with Steve Topper, who's a Solution Architect for Pitney Bowes. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, great to be here. So, um, I'm going to start out, I want to talk a little bit about a survey that you've recently done. Um, you surveyed retailers to find out where they stand with next generation customer engagement strategies. Can you tell us just, a, give us a little background on the survey? Sure. Um, you know, we wanted to hear a little bit more about how, you know, what retailers are doing with their strategies and initiatives and goals, how channel adoption fits into all that, and how they're using analytics to make those decisions. Okay, and so what were your overall impressions of the feedback you got from the retailers in the survey? You know, actually interesting and surprising at the same time. You know, we had gone into, uh, it looked at, uh, the survey was almost 300 uh, retailers, um, 81 of those with greater than $100 million. Uh, cross-section of uh, big box, grocery, hard goods, and, and you know, um, and soft goods. And it, it was shocking, you know, we've always known that retailers are struggling to keep up with the empowered customer. Um, I think when we saw the data, we were shocked to see just how far that gap is, um, and that also they're actually aware of the gap, um, and very much aware of it. And so it's interesting, uh, you know, some of the data started pointing to possibilities of why even though they know all this, why the gap is so big. Right, it's just the, it's the old adage that I say all the time, you know, we, we have the data, but we don't know what to do with it. Right? A little bit of that, yeah. A little bit of that. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about social media, and I, and I know that um, from the survey results, a majority of your retailer respondents said they have a presence on Facebook. Um, do you, do you feel like that's working for them, and are there other opportunities in social media that you think they're missing out on? Uh, you know, they are. Um, and we did see predominantly Facebook and Twitter are being used and being used effectively as they should be. But we're, you know, shocked to see that, um, you know, when you look at Pinterest and, um, you know, look at YouTube, there's some really good success stories out there, you know, not just about what's working, but also from a metric standpoint, uh, you know, really when you look at Pinterest. And we were shocked to see very little adoption, you know, in the two of those. Uh, you know, and really we have a hypothesis is that, you know, could this possibly be because of, you know, popularity and what people are seeing in the media as opposed to what works and what from a metric standpoint is going to drive their business. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Because I know that, you know, I hear so much about how successful uh, retailers have been on Pinterest, yet it sounds like a lot of them just still aren't on board. Yeah, and, and we don't, you know, we didn't get into whether they're planning that or not, but as far as what they've got in place now and they're using, um, big gap between those top two, Facebook and Twitter and, and all the other channels, um, and how they're interact, all those channels are interacting together, you know, as we're hearing a lot at the show about Omnichannel. All right, I want to switch, switch gears and talk a little bit about location intelligence. Um, so do you, do you feel like most retailers are, are up to speed as far as you know, understanding location intelligence and you know, strategizing to implement it? And um, just you know, what kind of advice would you give to retailers who are thinking about starting it? Sure. You know, I think the, the front of the curve retailers um, are, have adopted that, know how to use it, and are using it effectively. Um, I think one of the challenges becomes that, you know, the first thing you've got to do is look at your customer experience and what you want to get from that. Um, once you've decided that, then you want to look at, um, okay, so for my business and who my customer is and how I make money, how am I going to implement that? And then I think not until you've got that down do you start looking at the technology, uh, you know, which is the geocoding and the reverse geocoding, how that fits into a mobile strategy you know, for my specific customer. Um, and, and, and I think that's what we're kind of seeing a little bit of a reverse, you know, uh, a lot of retailers are doing it um, in the reverse order right now. And I think they're, they're almost creating one of their own challenges. There's still a lot of headroom when it comes to, you know, these technologies in, um, you know, what is the context of my consumer? Why are they shopping? Who are they shopping with? Uh, you know, and then what is the trip? You know, is it an immediate need where they came from home? Is it shopping for sport, you know, where it's a woman and her girlfriend shopping? Um, and are they coming from work or home to do that trip? There's, this is, there's a lot of headroom here for retailers to start taking advantage of that, um, as well as what's influencing that trip. So is it who you're with during the shopping trip? Is it uh, a friend of yours bought something a week ago and so that triggered you to go to the store and take a look? Um, or is it peer to peer? Is it stuff you're seeing or reading about on social media as far as recommendations um, um, or likes. 
And once you have that information, then um, as retailers, then you're able to reach out uh, to the shoppers before they get to the checkout with offers and promotions. and Absolutely, that's critical. And I think that's one of the, the challenges right now when we're talking about big data, when it's succeeding and when it's failing, is you need to be thinking about things like that, what I want to do with this data, um, before you start you know, accumulating all the data and, and starting to analyze you know, the hundreds of things that you possibly could get out of it. So, um, call centers as a strategy for improving business. Where, where are retailers with that? Are they, you know, how are, how are, are they using them effectively, I guess? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, they're not, and they're, I, in my opinion, exactly where they were years ago. This is uh, one of the oldest channels, you know, in, in the back in the day when we used to talk about multi-channel being three channels, direct mail, email, and call centers. And not a lot has changed. And, you know, there's, there's a lot to be done here that they're not taking advantage of. Uh, you know, being able to uh, anticipate what, you know, just what we're talking about is more intelligent interactions, not just picking up the phone and, and talking reading or reading a script. And, you know, it's, it's anticipating what the call's about or signaling what the call's about. It's being able to offer up either what the customer wants or needs, and at times what they may not even know yet. Uh, you know, being able to offer them a product that um, could save them a trip to the store, you know, in two or three weeks, but but telling them about it now, or the the flip side of that is actually getting them to come into the store one more time when they weren't going to, and you know, so there, there's a lot that can be done here, and I think that um, you know what we'd like to see is um, you know retail marketers trying to figure out ways where the the call center can be more of an integrated channel experience where it's connected to all the other channels, including social media, um, including chat, uh, but also taking that concept and you know moving it from just an operational cost center to a revenue engine. And you know, there's a lot of retailers out there that are not taking advantage of this. Yeah, they, they, they may have just been ignoring it as, as maybe as a way to help the business. And um, you know, we all hear too many stories about customer service problems from whenever you call in and that's Absolutely. you know we need to we need to change that conversation I think that's exactly it I mean we saw in the data that it's about the operational aspect of the call center so let, let's get this right um, so it's it's tactically um, being done and not strategically being done. Right, absolutely. Um, so the last thing I want to ask you about is um, analytics. And analytics is certainly you know, a hot topic, um, buzzword in retail right now. It has been for a while. Yeah. And it has been for a while. Um, and, I, and I think that you know, there probably are still a lot of retailers that aren't approaching it correctly. What, do, what did you see um, based on the survey results of you know, how retailers are uh, benefiting from analytics and what, what else they can be doing? You know, there's still a lot of room for improvement there as well. Uh, you know, uh, people have been saying for a long time, uh, you know, analytics for the sake of analytics. And, and I think we're seeing that. We're, 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 the data wasn't showing that analytics is driving decisions. It, it seems like they're doing analytics, um, but in, for the same reasons they were using analytics five years ago. Not for anything new, not for any new strategies or new initiatives. And, you know, it's concerning to us a little bit, uh, but you know, I have to tell you, I mean, you know, we, we've been hearing that, and we're hearing that now. We've always been hearing that, um, and, and, and you're even hearing that in terms of when, you know, during the big data discussions. You know, when, now you're starting to the, the early read on big data is that a lot of the failures were because, you know, retailers didn't look at why they wanted to do this. They heard about big data. They knew they needed a big data initiative, but then did it for the sake of big data. Uh, but we're at, we're very hopeful. You know, the, the new tools that are out uh, for the retail marketer in terms of analytics, they are easier to implement. Uh, they're, they're more cost effective now in terms of buying them. They're, they're really more approachable. Uh, and, and now they're used, they're, they're being designed better so that uh, you don't need to be a statistician and you don't need to be a data scientist in order to use the tool or for that matter, get insights out of it. And so we're really excited about that because that's, you know, you hear all the time, you know, the, the shortage of, you know, resources out there for analytics jobs. And, you know, that's the way to solve it. And, and the tools are now coming, you know, into the market um, that enable, uh, you know, enable the retailer to do that. And so we're very encouraged by that. 
um, you, you know, so that it's analytics, not just for analytics sake. And um, you know, we're, we predict that the next wave is that when retailers, the, the same person who's getting in the mind of the shopper um, and really look at what they want, why they're buying, are they happy after they buy, when the person who's getting into their head is the same person that's doing the analytics, that's where the real power is going to be from and where companies can really innovate. Maybe they just need to step back and think outside of the box a little bit as far as what questions they want to ask you know, of their data. And I think that's right, and it is an iterative process. I mean, sometimes you are going in there without knowing you know, what the questions are, much less the answers, but that's why I think you need um, you know, at times a different set of people that are going in and doing the analytics and, and, and getting at the insight. Um, and which is why we're really encouraged by that convergence between um, you know, the mind of the shopper and the, and the person doing the analytics. Great. So I know that you're still in the process of um, collecting all the data from the survey and putting together a final report. So um, our, our, our viewers should be on the lookout for that final report when it comes out because I think it's going to have a lot of great insights. Absolutely. Uh, we're really excited about it and it should be coming out in the next few weeks. Terrific. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for joining us as well. Have a great day.